Hello, hello. Um, it's the first day of November, and this is the tarot reading for our whole world. It's for the world, um, especially the Western world. This is November 2022. I was tempted to ask about the U.S. election next week, but we will have some answers to that soon enough. So um, I decided to focus elsewhere. Um, things still seem to be heating up at many levels, and I keep hearing about nuclear war. So I decided my first question would be about that. Uh, for months also, I have tried to figure out a way to ask about the ongoing uh, stream of medical threats coming at us, but it always seemed too dangerous to talk about it. So this month, I was able to um, frame the question in terms that I thought could be talked about without all the big tech sensors jumping down my throat. So we'll see. Might have to redo this. <laughs> so the questions asked were, number one, are we going to have a nuclear war or a kinetic war? And question number two, what is the future of our relationship with pharmaceuticals and the medical system? Question number one, are we going to have a nuclear war or even a kinetic war? And when I saw this card, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed and a lot unnerved at such a blunt response to the question, are we going to have a war? The three of hearts is known as the Lord of Sorrow. It represents intense mental activity affliction, conflict, war, judgment, strategy, separation, and legal matters, among some other things. But these are the most relevant to the question that we ask. It points to explosive relationships, obstacles, heartache, betrayals, loss, and burdens. And there's more. The card symbolizes rupture, absence, perversion, and secrecy. And I could go on and on. This is a very powerful card. So now I have to say our situation does not look good. The card is very simple in what it depicts. There's a large red heart in the center with three swords piercing right through the central core of that heart. The entire background is gray clouds and rain. Says the Rider White reference book, well, what can this mean but pain, harm, and sorrow? Yes, it certainly can indicate that we're headed for war and a very grave future. Uh, no pun intended there on the word grave. <laughs> but let's look at some other things associated with this card. So first, the big red heart. The heart represents a tremendous amount of feeling and emotion associated with a situation. War is certainly something that stirs deep feeling and emotion. The heart also symbolizes things like bloodlines, birthrights, and inheritance. The color red indicates passion and anger, as well as high energies, the need for healing, and life itself. If you are among the awake who have been reading, watching, and researching the current situation, a couple of those terms, bloodline and birthright, are likely to bring to mind a lot of questions having to do with the hidden elite players calling the shots that are pushing us into war. Running right through the center of the heart are three swords. Swords represent the mind, the intellect, thinking, logic, and the ability to cut the ties that bind and blind us. And cutting those ties leads to freedom from bondage and saves us from going down the wrong path. Swords symbolize the ability to cut to the chase. 
to get to the essentials, recognize those essentials, and get to the root of a problem. And the swords use perception and thinking as the most important tool. So when we put together the feelings held in the depths of the heart and the power of the thinking mind, what we have is a multidimensional warning that says, if you do not bring your heart and mind together immediately to sort out what is truly important to you, the situation is going to teach you what's really important in a way that brings great sorrow, pain, and harm. It goes on to say, don't let your heart become a murderous pit. And what this urges us to do is to heal. It, they, the whole thing is about healing the situation. The message behind this is heal the situation um, now. And to heal means to make whole, to make complete. So to make whole in a situation involving war means getting to the root of the problem. Why are we fighting? What are we fighting for? Who is fighting? What's at stake? How far are we willing to go to win? And how will we know if we've won? And in addressing these questions, the Three of Swords points to what to look for in the situation. So look at that three up top. The three is a recognized symbol of the geometric form of the triangle. And the three of swords often points to a relationship that has devolved into a triangle with someone interfering in a relationship between two others. Is the United States interfering in the relationship between Russia and Ukraine? thus setting up a triangle that will have very sorrowful, harmful results? I think so. Is this interference causing the threat of great suffering in Europe while also forcing everyone around the planet to take sides? Hmm? I think so. Is the U.S. being abandoned by its former allies because of that interference? I think so. So if we look closer to home at the situation right here in the United States, do we have triangles all over the place? For instance, the triangle between Democrats versus Republicans versus people who no longer believe in either of those parties. What about the congressional, executive, judicial branches that are no longer cooperating as a government? What about the U.S.-China-Russia triangle? As for being abandoned by our allies, China, Russia, and India have pretty much stood together against the U.S. And Germany... One of our oldest allies appears to have made secret deals with Russia. Why? They need fuel for heating this winter. Another aspect of this card that I thought was very appropriate for our war question is it indicates the blurring or erasure of boundaries and the opening to a new dimension of existence. When you have a point, you have a location. When you have two points, you have a line. When you have three points and they're not in a line, that third point opens up another dimension. So that opening of another dimension points to the end of a season, the end of an era. It points to the end of a way of life and the transition to some other way of life. When wars are over, there's often a significant redrawing of maps with new countries added, old countries gone or sometimes shrunken, and people left to figure out 
And how do we rebuild and go on with our lives? A map recently released by Russia shows the possible redesign of the entire heart of the Eastern European, Western Asian region. They're already blurring the boundaries. The Three of Swords is uh, somewhat related to the Empress card, which is also a three. And the Empress is often depicted as pregnant. Pregnant with new life. And this hints at the idea that the wake-up call forced on people by war is followed by a new life. A new way of seeing the world. A new way of being in the world. This card is related to the constellation Libra in astrology, uh, which is all about justice and the need for balance. Something we would be wise to recognize before we get into any kind of war. This card is also ruled by Venus, who represents love, peace, friendship, creativity, and expansion. But in this situation, highlights the absence of those qualities. So I have to say that the more I examine the Three of Swords, the more I realize we are already at war. And we're losing. We're losing everything. Our country, our friends, our self-respect, our trust, our financial system, our health, our government, our freedom of speech, our right to bear arms, our entire way of life. The big gray clouds and rain filling the background of this card seem to emphasize the reality that we are already at war at every level. And the fears, the uncertainty, and tears of sorrow have already begun falling. And certainly that's true for the people in Ukraine. The period of time in which this card is most active, most powerful, is from mid-November to mid-December. And when I do this, I was like, oh, wow, this is very timely. So the gray clouds point to cloudy perception and an absence of clarity. And the gray color itself calls for some detachment some neutrality, and the intense effort to let go of pointless pipe dreams. And might those pipe dreams be of global hegemony? This card asks us to wake up now to what's really important, what's really worthwhile. The bottom line is that we're already at war, and everything is at stake. And we're about to learn some very difficult lessons. Question number two. What is the future of our relationship with pharmaceuticals and the medical system? And the card drawn is the Eight of Swords. Here we have another card from the Suit of Swords. And like the Three of Swords, the eight does not portend a very happy relationship for us in the future. I should probably emphasize that this card is known as the card of binding to duty. So swords are about thinking and the intellect. And this card highlights the bonds of duty. It highlights the bond between thinking and doing. And it urges us to do what we say we're going to do, and especially do what we think is right. So that's especially important in relation to the medical system, the pharmaceuticals, etc. Do what we say we're going to and do what we think is right. Each person has to do what they think is right for themselves. So since I'm asking about this in terms of the entire world, 
it takes on a little bit a little shade difference in terms of meaning so let's look at it a little more closely um on the card itself there's a woman in a long red dress standing with her arms bound tightly to her sides she's not quite completely surrounded by a circle of swords that have been jammed into the ground to form something of a jail or prison around her but she's somewhat encircled the woman is wearing a blindfold and she's standing in a puddle of water blue water there's a castle high on a mountain behind her and the sky is gray the woman symbolizes the nurturing aspect of medicine and pharmaceuticals that should be in operation woman is the nurturer man is the protector okay so in terms of pharmaceuticals and the medical system this this card symbolizes that nurturing aspect of those two aspects of our reality system and the long red dress says that those in the business of making and prescribing medicines are truly passionate about their work it's likely they love what they do and it's probable that many of them like the work almost more than the money they make doing that work since my question was about the future of our relationship with pharmaceuticals and the medical system the woman in the red dress points to the fact that we on our side on the population side have long been interested and grateful for the research the pills the medicines and the relief from our aches and pains so there we have both sides of the relationship okay however there's a warning associated with this card that says things are not what they seem and this warning would be for those in the pharmaceutical business and the medical system as well as those who go to them for help things are not what they seem <clears throat> The blindfold on the woman points to the fact that neither the doctors and scientists nor the general population that's us have been able to see the bigger picture of what has been going on it points to a failure to take stock of something we're blindfolded we're blind we're not seeing in the case of pharmaceuticals was there any real healing going on or were they just covering up symptoms in the case of us the people were we any healthier and more resilient over time the woman's arms are bound tightly to her sides and this symbolizes several things difficulty if not an outright inability to stay in balance there's no ability to handle the situation any differently her hands are tied their hands are tied our hands have been tied and there's no way to see where things are going to go or to move smoothly in a direction that would produce better results both the pharmaceutical companies and the population are tied into a paradigm that keeps them immobile what is that paradigm is it based on the assumptions and beliefs that we can just take a pill and heal we don't have to do anything different the castle high on the hill behind the woman actually it's uh, more like a mountain symbolizes someone or something far above the madding crowd and not involved in the everyday stream of life in terms of the pharmaceutical companies and the medical system the castle indicates controllers who are set above way above cut off and isolated from the workings and the rules 
of a common man while they're making decisions that serve only the pharmaceutical business without taking into account the needs or the conditions, the decisions that would make the world a better place. As for the population, the castle points to a similar isolation. People struggling with the absence of communication with the medical system and the failure to provide feedback to those in that system. It points to a population that puts doctors and scientists on a pedestal, thinks that pills and potions will save them, and that no effort on the part of the individual is needed. Without feedback, without input from their customers, the pharmaceuticals and medical professions suffer. They suffer under the illusion that they're helping. And then the population suffers as a result of holding fantasies of healing without taking responsibility for their health. Of course, the eight swords that form the prison around the woman indicate that the relationship is caught in a trap on all sides. The medical system remains caught in something they no longer have control over, yet they're fully responsible for. The pharmaceuticals are caught in something that demands that they make decisions that serve the investors, which ends up not serving the population. And the population remains trapped in a system that maintains an aura of success and the power to heal, but no one ever heals or feels the youthful energy that is their birthright, even into old age. We should be spry, not losing our minds to dementia, not losing our bodies to degeneration two decades before we finally step out the door. That's not healing, and it's not living either. The prison, those eight swords, is one that any one of them could walk out of, but they remain imprisoned, partly by the blindfold that prevents seeing and honest observation, and partly by their own failure to use the power of the swords, the weapons of the intellect, which are logic, critical thinking, and the ability to free oneself from the ignorance that maintains the entire situation. So, the Eight of Swords is related to the third house in astrology, which is the house of thinking, education, communication, kin, and local travel. It's all about writing, math, science, and commerce. That's the third house, writing, math, science, and commerce. And sadly, what we see are written reports that are fraudulent, numbers that are falsified, science that is manipulated, and commerce whose goal is not just to make a fair living, but to make a fortune at the expense of everyone who gets trapped in the system. The Eight of Swords is also associated with the planet Jupiter. And Jupiter demands that we grow up. Jupiter demands the expansion of consciousness and it asks us to communicate, communicate among ourselves, explore new options and possibilities, communicate with the two systems we're dealing with, pharmaceuticals and the medical system. So this next part highlights what may at first appear to be conflicting points of view. But listen carefully, because it highlights the nature of the eight. The eight, when you turn it on its side, it becomes an infinity symbol. Spirit and material has to be balanced. So the eight requires balancing conflicting energies and perceptions. So first, 
The number eight is associated with a cube, also known as a box. The cube, or the box, symbolizes, quote, arriving at a mature level of development, along with the realization that we must become more involved in our world, end quote. We must take responsibility and develop the self-discipline needed to thrive, not just survive. That's not enough. So that would seem like an instruction to take action, do something. Uh, ho hold on there. <laughs> In addition to the symbolism of the cube, this card is also known as the Lord of Interference. Didn't we just hear about interference right here? There's this whole theme coming up this month. What is interfering? Okay. So let me reread that. In addition to the symbolism of the cube, this card is known as the Lord of Interference. It tells us that our relationship with pharmaceuticals and the medical system interferes with true healing. Mm. Interference indicates that outside forces are making decisions that benefit only themselves. And when we're not giving feedback, when we are not involved with our own lifestyle and health and healing efforts, when we're putting doctors and scientists on a pedestal, we're allowing the interference to continue. This brings up the feeling that we should do something. And the question in my mind then asks, well, what should we do? However, when this card is drawn, it indicates a state of pretty serious doubt and confusion because of the hidden interference of someone or something. And the result is that this card asks us to wait. It says there's too much inner conflict. Even though the swords do not form a closed prison around the woman, and we could walk out of the situation, the puddle of water the woman is standing in points to very high emotions that add to the interference. The water is blue, symbolizing clarity, but the woman can't see that. This state of mind lacks clarity, and that's why the advice is to wait. The Eight of Swords also hints that more information will come out that will add to our clarity and allow us to find our voice and to make better choices. We'll not only have more clarity, we will also be able to see the bigger picture. And we will not get caught in the back and forth drama of either or decision making. We'll have more options. Once those options appear, then we can begin to move forward to free ourselves from the prison of misperceptions, skewed convictions, and erroneous thinking. Number eight, the number eight, is symbolic of having reached the earliest stage of the final expression of something as it begins to wind down. And when paired with the eight of swords, it represents the peak of power and success for the pharmaceuticals and medical system in our material world and the beginning of the end for them. As we get involved, take action, communicate our ideas and input, and avoid, or at least move more smoothly, through crisis. So let's sum up with our first question, which was, are we going to have a nuclear war or even a kinetic war? A card drawn? was the Three of Swords, and it points to pain, sorrow, and harm. It's the card of war, and indicates that a triangular relationship is the root of the problem. 
A triangular relationship is one in which a third party interferes in a relationship between two others. The results of a triangle are often heartbreak. War teaches, it certainly does. War teaches a lot. It teaches what is truly important in life. And this card asks us to bring the deep feelings of the heart into union with the power of the intellect in order to learn what is truly important before things get any worse and we learn our lessons about what's important the hard way. The second question, what is the future of our relationship with pharmaceuticals and the medical system resulted in the eight of swords, eight of swords being drawn? As I went through the reading, however, I saw that the situation we are in was as much the result of our attitudes, ignorance, and lack of responsibility as it was of the uh, pharmaceutical medical system. We handed over our power. We didn't keep up with our self-discipline. We put doctors and scientists on a pedestal, and we took the easy way out which turned out to be not so easy. We played the role of gullible to the medical pharmaceutical role of master. That's a bit difficult to swallow. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But the cards indicate that they have reached their peak, the pharmaceuticals and medical system, and they're now at the beginning of the end for them. The cards indicate that more information will come out within the next eight weeks, and we will then be able to make appropriate changes, move forward, and begin to correct the situation. We can no longer abdicate our role in the relationship. So that's it for this month. Thank you for listening. We are headed toward Thanksgiving this month, and I wish you peacefulness without boredom, information without fear, and gratitude for one another. So let's watch and see what happens with the election. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Happy Thanksgiving, and have a wonderful, wonderful November. <laughs>